you are a huge fan of this vehicle and you're seeing this title, just, just chill out, okay? Because uh, if you haven't seen my five things we love video, check that out first because that will clear up a lot of things. This uh, two part thing is uh, this five things I love and hate is a follow up to the review that we did. So I will leave a card up to that. Also, if you didn't know, this is my car, I own it. So uh, if I hated it so much, why would I own it? So just, just, just think a little. Getting right into it, transmission. Don't like the transmission. Not in its entirety, just sometimes I don't like it. But the sometimes I don't like it, I really hate it. So what am I talking about? This has a in-house built Hyundai Genesis, whatever, eight speed transmission. When you're on the move and you're going, it's fine, it's smooth. It's a good feeling transmission for the most part. Sometimes when you're driving the vehicle and you're at a complete stop and then you just floor it, you just turn the car and you floor it, nothing will happen for like a solid second. Now that is the scariest thing when you're trying to, you know, make a full left hand turn you know across the entire road and you know you floor it and then nothing happens i hate that it is just a really obnoxious thing when i had the stinger which is pretty much the exact same transmission as this but with slightly different tuning it is tuned so much better than this vehicle now i'm sure if you have the sport model the the tuning will be a little bit different even still but i've heard the stinger and g70 pretty much have the best transmission performance still not zf8 speed levels of transmission performance but this is the worst transmission transmission performance in any Hyundai Kia product ever for the you know luxury cars. If you're into you know paddles and stuff, don't even bother using it because it is so hesitant that it's not even worth your time playing with the paddles. That's that's pretty much number one. If you own this car, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you've driven or if you reviewed it, you know what I'm talking about. So now this is the part of the video where I wish I had a wide angle lens, but uh, I'm too poor to afford one. So uh, we're just gonna make this one work. Now, number three on the list is going to be that stupid screen performance. Uh, I don't really like that screen and I don't like what I had to go through this morning with the screen, not just this morning, before. So I'll start it up for you guys. Uh, push button so you can put up the keys. So you start it up, you know, you got your little Genesis logo, which is a blatant copy of a Bentley logo. So now this thing pops up, it lags, it's, uh, you know, it takes some time before you can confirm. And then within that time, if you ever wanted to change the temperature, it's uh, a little bit laggy. See, as you can see, it's not letting me change anything of the, uh, you know, it's, it's taking some time for me to, you know, change the temperature as soon as I get into the car, you see. That's part of the reason why I don't like having this climate control linked to the screen because if it's really cold outside and you wanna quickly turn up the heat, the car won't let you do that because it's gonna take its time, you know, loading up its software or whatnot. And within that time, you're pretty much freezing your ass off. So to not freeze it off, you should turn on your heated seats. You can turn that on, you know, immediately. You have your heated steering wheel, like I mentioned on the other five things I love video and this all-wheel drive trim. So the screen is, other than the climate control, which I think should have been separated from the screen in pretty much every car, the screen overall is just laggy compared to the, the Stinger that I had. This is uh, pretty much like a 2015 car, but it's updated for 2018. So it has a few updates, but it's just not as fast and crisp as it was in the in the stinger it just takes more time to load and sometimes when you click on a button it doesn't you know load up as quickly but like i said it does have apple carplay and android auto as standard for 2018 but even that lags because the screen performance just isn't there now granted this is the eight inch touchscreen uh, when you get the v8 models and the the sport trim models there is a 9.2 inch screen i have never messed with that or played with that so i have no idea what the performance on that is like also when i use uh, apple carplay in this car sometimes it does glitch up i even listened to your guys advice and bought this you know, fancy red cable, this anchor cable that's, you know, braided and all that. The the amount of glitches has, it's not as frequent now when I use Apple CarPlay, but for the most, you know, other people blame it on Apple, whatever. It's just overall, connect your phone, listen to your music and just turn this off. The climate control thing is really what pisses me off in this car though. So number three on this list is actually gonna be in the back. The trunk space, pretty good, you know, ignore my, you know, piece of cardboard, but otherwise it's a pretty spacious trunk, uh, for especially for a four door sedan, you're nothing like a Stinger obviously, but pretty good for what this is. But my problem with it is that this is the dumbest thing. You know, a lot of luxury cars do this and I don't know why. Uh, you can't fold down the seats in this car and that's, I don't understand the point of that. I guess people with luxury cars don't wanna be practical. I don't know what that is, but 
but you know, in a pinch it would be nice. There is a pass-through that you can use. That's the only, you know, bit of extra space that you get. Um, I just wish that you can just push down the seats altogether. That, that would have been best. Now, another weird thing about this trunk now, you know, if I'm wrong about this, leave it down in the comment section, but this is like an electronic trunk. As you can see, you can open it with the key fob um, right there with that button, but you cannot electronically close the trunk uh, with the button that's just really weird to me so you have to you can electronically open it and there's the smart trunk access where if you stand next to it for like five seconds it'll automatically open for you but there isn't a button that you can press to just close it you know if you're going to make something electronic make it electronic all the way i don't know why you would make it like a halfway electronic system because you can also open it from inside the car but you, i don't see a button where you can close it if i'm wrong again let me know in the comments below Okay, so the next thing that I don't really like about my G80 is the garage home link system. It works just fine, but there is one huge annoyance. You can only use it while the car is turned on. So what do I mean? Right now, my vehicle is turned on, and if you look here, the mirror is active. It's showing me that, you know, it's west, and you can probably see my garage door uh, in the back, kind of blurry, but it is there. And if I, you know, press the button, it'll open. So you saw the little emblem there but I don't want to open it. So I'm going to close it. Now it worked there because the car is turned on. Great. But if I have the vehicle turned off, so now everything is off. Everything is turning off. Um, the battery is probably still on because you know, the lights are still on. And if I go to uh, press the button, nothing happens. The home link system does not work anymore. I think the reason for this is because Genesis does this for the safety of the person owning the vehicle and their home. So usually, you know, like the previous vehicles that I've owned in the past, like the Acura TSX and, you know, my parents' uh, Volkswagen Passat that they had for a little bit, they all had home link systems, but you can still use it while the vehicle was turned off. And the problem with that is somebody could break into your car and then open up your garage door and get in your house that way. So I think Genesis is trying to prevent that. But the reason why I find this to be an issue is that when I have the car turned on and I open the, or I close the garage door, fumes are getting inside of the garage and that's dangerous. Although there, there's pros and cons to each side. Um, I personally find this to be a nuisance, but I understand why Genesis does it because the previous Genesis before mine, you were able to close the garage door while the car was turned off so obviously genesis is thinking and you know this is why they do it but i personally find this to be a nuisance continuing inside of the vehicle the next thing that i don't like about this car is like the cubby spaces like all the space forget my uh my camera back there the things that i don't like about the uh the space in this vehicle is that there's two cup holders here great so i can hold two water bottles but if you look here to the side this door pocket i can't even fit a water bottle in it i'll show you this is just a regular size water bottle um, kirkland if you care i cannot fit this water bottle like properly anywhere i mean that is just so annoying because now that can potentially you know like come out of the car you know and that can cause a huge fiasco right there so it's just really annoying that you can't place anything and i'm sorry i don't have a tim hortons a small cup of coffee to test that with partly because i don't drink coffee and partly because i'm in america where there is no tim hortons and i'm not about to go to starbucks anyway that's just a small thing uh that i don't like i can't really fit more than two water bottles comfortably in this vehicle the other door pocket is much the same but there are things that are done well in this vehicle like i like these controls right here they fall perfectly where your hands fall it is a little bit cumbersome there's a lot of buttons going on here for the mirror but overall it's pretty good my hands fall exactly where they need to be the only other thing is that there is no handle to you know grab onto to close the door there's only this thing right here and that's kind of, you know, usually most cars have a, a, a thing where you can kind of grab onto, but this car doesn't have that. And the door is just so long that, you know, you kind of want that. But you know, there's like some strange ergonomics. And this is kind of where like the Stinger and the newer Kia Hyundai products kind of shine is the ergonomics. I It was a much more clean layout and the Stinger as far as the buttons and the usability. The, tor the door pockets, I could comfortably fit water bottles in that vehicle. In this vehicle, it's kind of compromised, you know, accessing the uh, the USB ports are kind of strange in this vehicle. So just some 
things to keep in mind you know there's some weirdness going on yeah just some strange things i mean overall it's a pretty luxurious cabin but there you go i mean that's uh another little annoyance that i've experienced and with that that pretty much wraps up everything that i don't really like about my g80 the car is one of the greatest cars i've ever owned driven reviewed whatever these faults that i mentioned you know you have to make no car is perfect you have to make compromises somewhere and uh, these are the compromises that I have experienced with the vehicle. So if you guys can relate, if you guys agree, if you guys... Every time, every time I try to make a video. Anyway, uh, if you guys uh, don't like it, you know, le continue doing what you're doing. Leave that tsunami of dislikes. And um, I guess I'll have to see you guys on the next video. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>